Jim Henson, the Muppets acquired for, I think, $60 million? But over here, what we really want is, we kind of want this book right. Can I grab it? AKA Powers, welcome to Monday morning. Uh, I got I got my, we're doing Disney content. I actually can't tell, but hey, we also have Warner Brothers. There's a, it's, it's a battle of which one's, okay. So, look, hold up. I need some of my iced coffee. I, it's just, it's too early. There's too many things happening in my brain. But Disney has a new CEO. The new CEO is the former CEO, Bob Iger. Now, Chapek is out. The reason, the reason why I had that little intro where I highlight this book, because this book goes it goes into a little bit of detail. Now there, there's another book by Michael Overitz, but the transition or the failed transition of Michael Eisner to Overitz during, we can say the second golden age of Disney was the Michael Eisner reign. The point I'm getting at is they tried to groom Overitz from, given he was from outside the company, but Chapek, Chapek was groomed from inside, from the guts of Disney. 25, 26 something years. I mean, the guy worked in the parks. He worked in uh, home entertainment. Uh, he was a part of the home entertainment boom where we would get like Bambi 2 and Little Mermaid 4 and there, there was like six Aladdin movies. The point I'm getting at though is, is, is he found money. He found a market even within home entertainment where you would think it's an easy business model and he expanded that business model into an animation juggernaut to the home entertainment division of animation. No one saw it coming and, and, and there's so much credit for that. The expansion and, and the aggressive uh, nature of the theme parks is also attributed to him. You, you have to remember they made uh, this giant financial um, commitment to Avatar for Animal Kingdom before people really like they, they did that sight on scene. They did that as soon as they saw Avatar. It's significant because you know we got Avatar coming now and people are getting really hyped up for it, like me. But it's not easy. It is the transition of a CEO, the size and the complexity of a company like Disney. The lesson to be learned with this is that, you know, we do, we should read what CEOs have to say. We should understand it, we should study it. it and it's not easy to find replacements and to even groom people for decades and expect them to perfectly inherit positions. Now, given, I know when it comes to the content uh, you know, the optics look really bad, meaning, uh, you know, Disney goes woke with, with Star Wars, they go work woke with the MCU, and, you know, almost like every property that they touch, uh, you know, National Treasure goes woke, goes woke, goes woke. You, it goes woke, goes broke, or, right? You go woke, you go broke. That's, that's, that's what the kids on the internet are saying. But the real lesson, okay, and it's not about uh, them sitting down uh, crying about Star Wars, okay? Star Wars is just a, a small pimple on the face of Disney. And what's happening with the company, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a strict overflow of COVID of 2020. It's more to do with that, okay? That's more the, the true analysis. A lot of people want to say it has everything to do with the Marvel movies, has everything to do with Star Wars. It has nothing. Bob Iger coming back is him optimizing and whittling down the company to optimize it. They will be doing layoffs, okay? If big tech is doing layoffs, the layoffs for Disney are not far behind. And that's a little bit of the, the, the real tragedy. COVID confused things with cash infusions and the restrictions, even when it comes to the theme parks. Uh, you, you would only believe that the theme parks did nothing but bleed money for two years with, you know, with COVID. And, you know, probably a little bit beyond. You know, the, the movie theater, uh, all the movie theaters took a major hit. 
you know, like, again, like, you need content into those movie theaters, good or bad, but you need a constant rollout to maintain the ship. It's just things like that, okay? The economy's crashing, merchandise is going to be down. Uh, again, things are elastic, you, you, you poke you poke the jello in one end, you get a bubble over here. That's how these things work. At the same time, though, we do have to respect that the CEO is a difficult, near impossible position to fulfill perfectly. We're, I mean, we're even seeing this with, with Facebook, with the, the all-in bet or on Meta. Uh, might be that might be the most bonehead CEO move of the modern day. But Disney, Disney is well enough. Their board of directors is agile enough to bring in Bob Iger again, or just bring him in for two years to correct the ship. And the two years is going to outlast the economy. He has an institutional knowledge and he has an instinct and he has a, a working mind of how to weather the storm. That's really what this is all about. It's about getting past the next two years. But you know, you gotta feel bad for the upcoming layoffs. Uh, that's just a prediction of mine, but it sucks. All right, people, quick one, AKA Pad here, I love you, goodbye.